Uh, hello guys, uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm a 3D artist and um, today I will show you um, how I created this uh, desert rocky terrain material in Substance Designer. Here you can see the graph. Uh, it's not really big. Mm. And uh, I will try to explain and show the uh, workflow I'm using here. Uh, and uh, sorry guys for my uh, language, uh, for my English language. Uh, but uh, it's not uh, perfect, but I'll try my best to explain as much as I can. Uh, so let's start from the stones. Here I generate the form shape uh, of the stone uh, and I have like uh, two workflows uh, how I uh, generate stones. Uh, this is one the first and this is second. So let's see uh, the first one. Uh, I started from Polygon 2 uh, and Polygon 2 and uh, uh, basically, the main idea here is uh, to start from the uh, basic uh, shape of the stone uh, with the gradient and sharp edges and afterwards uh, create the uh, uh, realistic shape of the stone. Uh, to do that, um, I'm using uh, the second polygon uh, 2 node with uh, splatter uh, circular. Uh, so the idea here is to uh, create a subtraction from this shape with this shape. Uh, so I can get here with subtract blending mode in blend node some kind of uh, stone shape and to see it better I can show you how the normal map is looking so this is our like starting point uh, the really like basic shape of the stone and when I uh, mess with the parameters here uh, basically it's uh, really like uh, really basic uh, setup here, just uh, three uh, polygon uh, uh, shapes uh, splattered around uh, and I can, uh, modify, uh, I can uh, make uh, some modifications in this node and uh, play uh, with the form, uh, with the shape of the stone. For example, uh, I can increase uh, number and you see uh, it's another kind of shape of the stone. So messing uh, with the parameters I can create different subtra subtraction from this shape uh, wi by this shape. It's uh, I think it's really a uh, good workflow because quickly you can iterate with a uh, uh, big amount of different uh, stone shapes. So for example like this oh it is updating and you can see uh, I got let in other variations of stones so it is looking something like this uh, and I get like the gradient uh, variations uh, edge variations and overall form variation so it's a pretty useful workflow uh, afterwards, uh, I blur it a little bit. Uh, and uh, because like uh, I don't like really uh, hard edges, so it now it is looking more like softer. Uh, afterwards, uh, I blend uh, with uh, parallel noise uh, histogram scan and blend with subtract mode uh, and it is, if you compare uh, the previous node and with parallel noise, 
uh, it's uh, cleared the shape of, of the stone. Uh, here you can see it is uh, uh, blurred and now it's more like um, more sharper. And you can uh, play with the Perlin noise uh, random seed and uh, you can see how the shape is uh, changing to you. So, I'll back to the zero or one, maybe. Yeah, come back to zero. Uh, afterwards, uh, no, actually, I like one. Uh, wait a second. Why it's is it zero? Yeah, I think it was zero. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, the next node is blend with uh, soft light uh, and uh, gradient liner one node, uh, and it is giving me a uh, small uh, gradient variation uh, from. Uh, the top to the bottom of the stone. It's uh, really subtle, but it is uh, working like at the end. Okay. Uh, uh, the next note is uh, auto levels. Uh, it is just uh, auto leveling. <laughs> Nothing like crazy here. Um, and um, after uh, this uh, step, um, I'm using again uh, the uh, uh, blend with subtract uh, and uh, subtraction with parallel noise uh, for the compare. You see, it's uh, doing basically the same thing, but uh, clearing a little bit more the shape of the stone. Uh, after this step, uh, I have uh, a warp node and it is uh, adding a little bit of noise um, on the stone. After I sharpen it, uh, the warp node is using clouds uh, to node with blur uh, high quality grayscale. Uh, and you can play uh, with the uh, blur um, uh, with intensity uh, to, like, for example, increase uh, the noiseness uh, of the uh, surface or decrease. For example, if you add intensity, you see it's uh, it's a little bit cleaner uh, and. Uh, a little bit sharper. So let's see 1.5. Uh, after this uh, I have a blend node and blending uh, basically my shape of the stone with this uh, uh, node. It is basically the shape so let's start from the beginning I have this uh, stone shape and I histogram uh, scan it here you see uh, and histogram scan again so basically I am creating like the mask of the stone uh, and after I'm adding to this uh, mask a little bit of bevel here you can see and blending this uh, bevel edge with my stone and I get something like this so if you compare this you see it's, uh, it's really subtle but it's really hard edge uh, of the stone and when I'm adding the a little bit of bevel 
it's uh, it's blending. Uh, it's more like sto softening softening the edge of the stone. It's really subtle, but when you will blend the stone with terrain, uh, it's uh, it's useful because uh, it's not too like harsh edge of the uh, around the stone. So it's uh, somewhere it's a little bit softer, somewhere it's hard. So it's more realistic, and you can play with it too. So for example, uh, if you mm, add a uh, distance, maybe eight. It's really, really like small, uh, really small modifications. So yeah, uh, I think if I put here three. Sides. Okay, now it's not here. I think here, but number four maybe or three, and here I will add five. So you can see I'm getting so many like variations of uh, stones but uh, now you can see it's not really realistic looking with this cut shape so I can uh, fix it with maybe a number three just a wait a second and here it's fixed so definitely uh, as much as I play with these two nodes uh, I can uh, get sometimes not uh, really looking like a stone, but uh, basically as more as I play with all the parameters, maybe radiating something or uh, changing the shape of the polygon, I can get so many variations of different stones and uh, in like really like small amount of time. That's why I love Substance Designer because it's really crazy how you can just iterate with a couple of nodes and you will get so much different results. It's really nice. Mm. So come back here and I think, yeah, for example here I have uh, some kind of uh, shape here, like triangle shape, I really don't like it. Uh, and uh, when I uh, working with the shape of the stone here you can see uh, with histogram scan I just remove this angle and after blending you see this artifact and after blending with the beveled shape it's a little bit softened and removed and I can play here maybe maybe two maybe six yeah, it's softening a little bit and removing this kind of artifact. Mm. The next uh, step is slope blur uh, grayscale again. I, uh, not again, sorry, it's like um, another pass after a warp. Uh, slope blur grayscale is basically quite similar to warp, but it is adding another layer of, uh, of the details and I'm using the same uh, Clouds 2 node with uh, blurring uh, and I'm getting such a result compared to this one it's like ano another pass uh, with the re reinforcing of the uh, details on the surface of the stone and the last node is warp with parallel noise I think here I'm just changing the a little bit shape uh, just playing with the randomness of shape. Yeah, you see, you see uh, it's really like uh, not maybe really important, but it is some kind of another variation. And um, I want to point uh, out that uh, uh, you can basically play with the uh, modifications, uh, dif adding different noises, playing with the form of the stone in infinite amount of notes. Uh, but mm, obviously you need, uh, when you like get the result you like, uh, I think it's better to stop because 
uh, you can like uh, work uh, on the stones um, all day long uh, and you actually <laughs> want to create uh, the full material so you uh, don't need uh, to use uh, a lot of uh, complex nodes because your graph at the end will be really heavy and it will be uh, really hard to work so uh, as soon as you got the result you like uh, for example you like the overall shape of the stone the surface variation and so on uh, just stop and maybe at the same time create another uh, variation of stone uh, it will be better and the graph will be not so much complicated so basically we finished with the first stone and I have uh, another um, uh, pipeline for the stones and I'll show you now guys um, bring my normal note here um, this uh, workflow is uh, coming from the artist uh, I saw uh, a couple days ago uh, uh, on algorithmic uh, uh, substance days I believe uh, meeting and one artist I will provide uh, the link uh, in description uh, he showed how he is creating the surface of the ro rocky surface and I really liked uh, the uh, workflow he showed and I tried to use it to uh, create the surface of the stone so the uh, main idea here is uh, to take a big shape of the rock some kind of rock and small shape that's why uh, here we are using uh, cells 1 and cells 2 blur both nodes uh, and uh, warp them uh, with uh, clouds 1 and we have something like this shape afterwards we are blending uh, the small uh, like variations of, of rocky shape here and we have the big shape and you see a small really subtle shape uh, after this uh, we have a slow blur gray scale it's uh, again with uh, clouds one uh, noid for slope um, it's just small uh, edge variation here you can see in comparison it's uh, really like subtle actually I think you can see but uh, the main idea of using slow blur scale uh, on really uh, small mm, uh, intensity because it's re really heavy oh, sorry guys my phone it's uh, really uh, uh, heavy on the details so that's why I'm using uh, really small uh, intensity okay let's go to the next uh, node um, after I invert this and get this uh, kind of effect it's just a simple invert grayscale uh, and you see it's more like uh, looking uh, some kind of uh, rocky surface and this is really nice and I really love it um, after I add uh, polygon 2 and basic primitive again uh, for the stone shape blur it a little bit and blend it with uh, mean darken so uh, over, uh, over this shape I'm adding the surface uh, rocky surface with mean darken and I got something like this uh, I like the shape of the surface and hard edges uh, and it is adding me this giving me sorry this kind of uh, stone uh, the good thing is to use uh, different uh, styles of stones different forms and different shapes it's really adding the believable effect uh, to your materials that's why here I have more like uh, small or more like uh, circular uh, round shapes or soft shapes and here I have more like rocky more like edgy uh, uh, stone 
and for example here uh, it's really uh, visible how the contrast shape uh, are and it's it's adding uh, another level of the interest uh, for your uh, materials I think and it's uh, really working uh, so you see uh, I uh, basically created uh, the another stone uh, really quickly here uh, with uh, not so many modifications but of course I can work uh, with the shape uh, use all my like chain that I used uh, here for example uh, but uh, for now uh, I liked uh, the result with just a quad shape uh, really like uh, simple shape and I already uh, liked the result and uh, this is what I'm talking when I uh, said that if you just like the result just stop and uh, go to the uh, next uh, step of your material because it's if it's uh, already working it's already nice and actually I like the result and I just don't need like to mess with the shape and of course I can change uh, the polygon to uh, sides setting uh, and I can you see I can get uh, another uh, another shape it's it's looking interesting too okay so here I created uh, like two uh, shapes of stones uh, and the next step is to tile those stones uh, over the terrain so basically uh, I used a tile sampler uh, with uh, like messed up with different settings uh, every time when you are using a tile sampler node just play around with all the settings uh, and you can uh, really quickly get different shapes uh, of the uh, pattern you are using uh, and um, yeah y for the uh, for who, who uh, don't know how to uh, import uh, to, to the in, uh, to, to the input uh, your shape your custom shape you need uh, in pattern uh, select a pattern input because by default I think it's square or, th or something uh, pattern input uh, will give you like the uh, pattern you like created here so I added uh, like this uh, kind of uh, stones variations uh, this one um, in other variations of uh, second stones and uh, in other variations uh, with the uh, mask uh, map input applied so here you can see um, uh, I'm using uh, two pattern inputs uh, I have like first uh, uh, stone and the second stone uh, and here I have uh, mask map input uh, uh, to like uh, remove uh, the stones uh, on like the places uh, for like more like uh, non um, uh, how to say you know to, to, pu to put the stones more like organic way uh, not like uh, at a complete tile uh, as I uh, for example uh, did here uh, but I think at the, the end I didn't use it because uh, I liked more how uh, the uh, terrain is covered with more stones uh, and as soon as terrain uh, has uh, the difference in height it is already adding uh, some uh, stones under the terrain uh, covering sorry uh, uh, under the terrain and some stones are uh, just popping uh, out of the terrain so basically yeah you can uh, use um, different uh, approaches here uh, actually uh, what is more like suitable for your terrain is it uh, enough rough or is it more like uh, uh, more flat so basically just play with the settings and see what you like more to use uh, the mask input uh, in uh, I think mask uh, masking yeah in color you have a uh, mask map uh, thre thre threshold uh, and you can you see 
play with it mm, and uh, basically the mask is the parallel noise so you can uh, play with the settings of the parallel noise and you will see how it is changing your uh, uh, tile uh, node uh, with, the m with the new mask. Uh, sometimes I'm not using uh, a tile generator. Uh, splatter is uh, another good uh, um, like uh, splattering your for the splattering your stones. Um, it really depends of the workflow but from my experience every time I uh, got uh, different results uh, from the tiling using splatter node uh, over uh, the uh, tile sampler. So basically just play with those and a lot of people uh, are not really uh, like to use uh, splatter. Um, because uh, uh, let's see yeah uh, you can for example take this letter and uh, just decrease the grid number and uh, you can add size variations and you can at rotation variations you can disorder uh, a random at true and at disorder and disorder angle and uh, sorry I'm just looking yeah you can zoom and at a uh, luminance uh, variation you can play with the pattern size so basically you are using all the settings you can here and uh, play with uh, those and and get like uh, some kind of uh, result. Um, <coughs> so here quickly you can see my settings that I used. It's like uh, pattern size, uh, rotation variation, um, disorder and so on. So just uh, keep in mind you can uh, play with the settings uh, as much as you want and uh, get uh, different uh, results yeah so just keep experimenting okay uh, let's move forward for example here I'm using like uh, another splatter uh, but for now it's uh, splatter circular and the good thing that uh, you can use uh, splatter circular too and it is creating a, a good um, s some effect of splattering stones uh, when they can uh, like uh, uh, splatter more randomly I, I think in my opinion and I really like uh, this effect too okay so this uh, method uh, is covering uh, how I created uh, stones uh, let's go to the ground uh, the ground uh, is really simple uh, Every time when you creating some kind of uh, terrain, uh, you can see it's really noisy. It is consisting from a lot of small uh, stones, uh, especially like uh, desert terrain, uh, and a lot of like sand uh, and different uh, variations, small uh, like um, little bit uh, cracks shape, a little bit soft. Uh, soft shape of the terrain. 
so just take uh, whatever noise you like for example clouds uh, 2 uh, is already uh, is looking more or less like a shape of the desert uh, terrain and just go from it uh, experimenting mixing uh, uh, with other nodes uh, to get the result you like the workflow I will show you now uh, it's uh, it is working for basically all the uh, terrains you want to create because it's uh, really like using the uh, really uh, easy uh, workflow uh, to create some kind of uh, believable uh, terrain uh, so I started here from uh, clouds 2 and blurred it a little bit uh, and uh, used a uh, mosaic grayscale. Mosaic grayscale is a great node. It is working uh, quite similar as slope blur scale, but here I'm decided to use mosaic grayscale, uh, basically with the same node. So uh, I'm putting through the blur blur scale uh, clouds two into a mosaic map and grayscale. And here I get you see uh, it's uh, more like a soft uh, dirt. Uh, uh, it's uh, what mosaic grayscale is doing it is just pushing uh, the pixels to the edge um, of the shape that's why I'm getting some kind of uh, sloppy um, uh, dirtish uh, shape with uh, cracks or something uh, it's already looking like a layering dirt or something so I really recommend you to experiment with mosaic grayscale node because it's uh, really helpful to very qu helpful to get uh, really quickly the primitive shape of the terrain. Of course, after to add uh, more variations to the edges and noise, I'm using warp node uh, with the same uh, clouds too through blur uh, uh, node here to the gradient input um, and. Uh, the another recommendation uh, try to use uh, as more uh, already uh, nodes and graph you have um, because it's obviously will save you a lot of memory uh, don't add new uh, noises unless you really need it you can add for example like five or four uh, noises just experiment with those and remove you uh, the other one you don't like it and use the same for example clouds too in different uh, uh, blendings, noises, uh, so using like slow blur or a warp, uh, it will really like uh, pay off at the end. Okay, uh, the next step is uh, non uniform uh, blur. Uh, here you can see it is uh, everywhere, uh, you can see uh, sharp edges, but after using uh, non uniform blur, uh <coughs> you can blend the hard edges uh, and create them more like uh, softer uh, and somewhere uh, in different uh, parts you can see uh, the hard edges uh, are still present so it's more like uh, more nature looking uh, terrain uh, with uh, soft and hard edges it's really adding the realism to you to your uh, texture so definitely use non-uniform blur uh, uh, blur uh, okay after I have here histogram range uh, just uh, arranging the levels of the uh, previous node uh, this is uh, really useful uh, afterwards uh, when you want to play how the terrain is covering stones that's why here I'm using histogram range and you can play with the position and range and you will see how the uh, terrain is covering uh, stones or an uh, opposite go down for example I can like use range and immediately not sorry immediately <laughs> my PC is not really fast sorry uh, you can see uh, how the uh, uh, terrain is covering those stones and it's uh, looking really nice. Um, depends uh, on the effect you want to get uh, to uh, um, uh, to uh, 
uh, have more terrain uh, on your texture or more uh, stones on your texture. So definitely play with this node. It is uh, helping you to uh, control this level of the terrain overall. So I, I'll bring it down, I think, to 16 maybe. Or maybe even less to 12. It's really a subtle effect, but uh, sometimes you need to uh, be really careful to get the result you really like. So don't uh, stress yourself if you uh, can't uh, get uh, the result you want because. Uh, I really uh, struggle with Substance Painter uh, for a long time uh, and uh, just don't stre stress yourself, just experiment as much as you can and uh, sometimes you will get a really easy uh, way to do uh, the thing you want and just save it, use it everywhere and uh, as much as you uh, will try uh, all the notes uh, uh, you have in the Substance Designer, uh, you will come up with different workflows. Don't like uh, s s stuck in one workflow. If, for example, if if uh, I it is not really working for you, uh, my workflow, don't like force yourself to use it. Just experiment with another node, and you eventually will get the result you like. It's uh, how it is working for me. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just just relax and, <laughs> and have fun with it. Okay, mm uh, the next step after histogram range, I blur it a little bit. Blur always is nice. Use it uh, to like uh, uh, to remove noisiness and other uh, like artifacts you can get uh, during the different manipulation. So yeah, use it. It's it's a nice one. Uh, I want to point that there is like another blur, uh, not blur uh, high quality grayscale. The another blur is um, is less expensive uh, than blur uh, high quality. So uh, where the uh, quality of blur is not really important, definitely use the standard blur node because it will save you. Uh, the performance, but uh, uh, I tend to use everywhere blur uh, high quality because basically it is giving you much uh, better result at the end. Uh, the next uh, note is uh, blend, uh, so here I am blending uh, this kind of um, rocky shape. Uh, basically the idea here is to get some kind of stones, small rocks are coming from the uh, terrain so that's why I'm using blend over overlay uh, with overlay uh, mode uh, to like add this uh, um, noise and this noise I got from here uh, really quickly show you uh, I used clo clouds one you see it's uh, some kind of uh, looking like in primitive <laughs> uh, uh, some kind of uh, rocky uh, shapes if you see it from the distance uh, I transform it uh, just double size and uh, after doubling uh, using transform to denote you see that uh, I, pu uh, I pushed s a spacebar uh, to see the tile uh, on the screen see um, and uh, the tile is uh, now is broken, so I'm using make a tile footer to remove uh, to create like a tileable uh, uh, texture with like really simple uh, settings. Uh, after I use high pass grayscale, just bring the uh, levels uh, together um, and used uh, another level. Uh, to remove the blackness of the shape because I need really all the peaks uh, of the stones blur it uh, again 
uh, here I, you can see I'm using standard blur because it's uh, really like not important for me uh, the quality just blur pixels uh, and invert it and after I overlay it uh, y here you can you can't see uh, basically the effect but uh, it's this this uh, those uh, shape <coughs> so it's really adding the uh, like another level of the uh, noise on the uh, on the terrain which is uh, really nice um, okay next um, uh, the next uh, note is uh, another blend uh, with those really small, small, small stones that are really softly uh, covering by the terrain and uh, it's really like uh, the part of the uh, terrain and it's some kind of uh, different from uh, the approach I used uh, for the uh, bigger stones uh, I just used uh, here um, another uh, again clouds one uh, and um, uh, sorry not uh, clouds one I used uh, dirt three uh, and you see it's uh, s looking in some kind of small uh, stones Sorry, I just grab uh, water. Um, okay, uh, I used uh, dirt three for small stones. Uh, after a slow blur, uh, a grayscale um, to create a more like a shape of the small stones. Uh, and again, uh, you see the difference. Uh, this is. Uh, more like stars <laughs> more or less and this is more like stones again if you put uh, into slow blur scale in to both inputs uh, the same uh, noise map uh, it will uh, with really like small settings it will push the white pixels to the edge all the pixels to the edge so basically you can get really quickly the uh, some kind of uh, visible form of, of something um, in my case, uh, I need to get stones, so I basically got the stones, small stones. The next note is levels. Uh, so I bring the dif difference in height uh, of the uh, stones. Again, slope uh, blur uh, scale to play with the form uh, and add um, small details. Uh, on the edges of the stone after I uh, blur it a little bit to remove harsh edges and blend it uh, with the terrain uh, what, uh, what here is happening I'm using like the mask of my uh, basically the terrain is using by uh, as a mask here <coughs> the uh, texture of the stone, the noise of the stones uh, and just uh, black uh, uniform color and here you can see already the uh, big, <laughs> not big mistake but not really like uh, uh, right use of the note you see I am using here uniform, uh, uni uh, uniform sorry, color uh, in 4K so basically I need to use even less uh, yeah because it's just info and I can uh, push D to dock it to the input because it's really unimportant uh, node and it will collapse uh, and uh, will read uh, easier this node this uh, graph so what I'm doing here uh, you see here on the terrain I have some kind of cracks and downs uh, that's why I want uh, my stones are going to those cracks that's uh, why uh, I used this terrain as a mask and uh, for example here uh, you can see uh, the light uh, part of the terrain is going up 
it's more like flat surface and here it is going down so it's more like a crack that's why here I have stones inside the cracks here the flat surface and I don't need to put more uh, stones on it because it's flat it is covering with the wind and more stones and uh, are going to the cracks so basically yeah you see here here <coughs> Okay, this is like uh, the last uh, blend with these small uh, stones uh, to my terrain. Uh, here I was using this uh, um, material for another pass uh, with a moss. So if you are interested uh, how I created the moss and another material with moss, uh, I think I will do another tutorial if you guys are interested just put uh, just put sh shut out <laughs> into the comments uh, I will do uh, the next tutorial with Moss so yeah here it is not uh, using it's just breaking the chain uh, basically the last node is levels I'm bringing levels back uh, to, to like reinforce all the details I have here okay so this is uh, ground uh, um, ground workflow um, let's go to the another step the next step uh, is barks those small things <laughs> uh, it's like uh, yeah it's really small barks from like uh, desert uh, trees, soft trees, small like uh, small grass uh, um, it's uh, basically uh, really powerful you can see uh, it's it's not like really important what actually it is it, it, it could be anything the main thing here is to add another shape that is quite opposite to the shape of the stones and it will add another level uh, of the detail and the interest uh, in material Th that's why I'm using completely different shape to add something into the into the terrain so yeah uh, let's see how I did it uh, it's quite simple uh, every time start f with the primitive uh, shape and uh, surface variation in mind basically bark it's more like a cylinder uh, shape uh, vertical shape uh, I transform used here tra transform 2d but it's not doing anything uh, afterwards I use skew a little bit to the left and skew grayscale to the right after I blend with multiply and got uh, some kind of shape on the bottom I, uh, on the bottom it's uh, more like a white shape uh, on the t uh, at the top it's uh, a little bit skewed and uh, uh, less distance shape it's more like a bark you know with the tree that uh, in the bottom it's big and uh, at the end it's small uh, after I use transform 2d to bring it into the proper shape of the bark uh used uh directional noise with uh, transformation to d to add uh, some with the blend node with mean darken uh, some uh, structure and some noise and surface to the shape more like a uh, tree branch shape you know uh, after I again blur it uh, and uh, used here directional warp to create the more like angular shape and to create this kind of shape I used uh, directional warp uh, uh, with uh, using uh, the intensity input uh, polygon 2 so it's some kind of uh, angle shape uh, and uh, I blurred it a little bit to decrease sharpness and here I got uh, this uh, form uh, the next pass again directional warp really subtle with parallel noise 
Uh, I added small bumps, bumps uh, on the shape. Mm, again, slow blur scale. Maybe it's too hard, but I don't know. It's event. It is working. Uh, another pass on the shape. Um, the next uh, step is uh, tile sampler. Uh, so I tiled and uh, using again the same method as I used. Uh, for the stones, uh, just uh, tiled s s s uh, the uh, different variations um, of the bark. D uh, different, you see different shi sizes, different uh, l luminance volu uh, volume, different uh, shape. Uh, so yeah, to add uh, some different barks. The next step is to warp everything again. Uh, I really like to warp uh, again and again and again because uh, it is every time is uh, decreasing a more procedural procedural look uh, of your material and every time adding uh, new variations. So that's why I'm using warp again. And of course, uh, blur a little bit after us to remove uh, small noises. Okay. So this is like three uh, bases, uh, stones, uh, terrain and barks. Now I need to blend everything together. Uh, and this is the tricky part. Uh, I, I need to blend everything together and uh, I'm keeping in mind that I need to color it afterwards. So. Uh, I need to create masks at the same time uh, while I'm blending uh, that stuff into one uh, uh, material. Uh, and the main uh, challenge here is uh, while blending to get not uh, only the mask of the stone but the mask uh, that is covering for example stones by other stones or barks and the terrain for the proper color texture and afterwards. So when I'm uh, creating Albeda, uh, I'm using like again uh, passes uh, independent of each other for the terrain, for the stones and for the barks. Now I will show you how I'm doing it. Okay, here basically I'm creating like height uh, and all the blendings together. It's really simple. Uh, the first pass I'm using like terrain with uh, those stones uh, and I'm using uh, blend with blending mode max lighten uh, and basically no other uh, settings are touched just blending uh, and every time uh, comment for yourself what you are blending and because it it's it's really helping uh, for the uh, readability of the graph overall and will definitely help you to understand for example when you open it after the month uh, of working with other materials and uh, for myself I already <laughs> will forgo forgot everything that I did a couple of months ago in the material and really it is helping to like uh, bring the memory back and to understand uh, maybe other artists will look uh, it's really useful to comment uh, for yourself and for other artists uh, while you are working uh, <coughs> okay uh, so here I uh, blended uh, terrain with a first pass of the stones 01 uh, and here I'm using basically the copy I will show you guys the copy of this node and I here uh, use the white and here you can see I already got the some kind of mask for the stones I just uh, subtracted the terrain after blending uh, from the uh, like stones uh, and here I get basically the mask, uh, invert it and uh, histogram scan it to get uh, this uh, mask. Uh, you definitely need to play a lot with this node, with these parameters to get exact uh, mask you need. Uh, you, 
you see it's not uh, fully opaque uh, here you see some kind of blending because here the uh, desert from the uh, sorry terrain uh, uh, sand is coming on the stone and covering a little bit of the uh, shapes uh, of the stone that's why it is really important for the color blending uh, you see here I will texture the stone uh, with the color and it will uh, here uh, will uh, uh, properly blending with the color of the terrain softly blending here I'll show you you can see for example it's a little bit uh, brownish sand is coming onto the rock and the uh, sorry stone and the stone uh, itself is gray um, that's why it's looking believable it's uh, it's integrating quite well into the terrain okay um, okay the next thing uh, really obviously really easy another like uh, blend with stones O2 so I'm using for the input the previous blend and uh, for the foreground I'm using another stones and blending again with max lighten nothing changing just adding uh, and on the top you see here I got uh, the mask uh, again for the stones for the second stones O2 next step blending stones O3 those stones blending again no changes with max sliding and I'm using now uh, the previous node uh, because I need to uh, take in consideration all of the blendings before with with all the stones uh, because the previous blending already created some kind of terrain and new stones that are blending can be covered by those stones that's why I need to subtract uh, the previous stones from the new stones <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh, not uh, really confusing but uh, when you experiment with your uh, w in your graph uh, with this uh, workflow you can see how it is really working uh, it's really creating the proper mask for the each um, st uh, stone layer for example here you can see basically this is how uh, is looking the stones and here uh, sorry and here you can see the mask for those stones that are already covered with the terrain and with other stones okay the next uh, step the same for stones O4 the same for stones O5 and the last one is for barks and of course I need to I need to please comment here barks okay um, this is the mask for the uh, barks of and um, so here I was using I think another approach and I'll show you why <coughs> if I will blend this node with max lighten uh, for example without mask um, you see what is happening as soon as I histogram scanned uh, the barks uh, now it is not uh, the black in the background and when I'm using a uh, blend with max lighten it is taking this gray scale and just covering everything and removing all the details from the terrain in previous nodes uh, why I'm using this uh, if I will add just simple just simple uh, bark you can see here 
it is really ugly looking it is really sharp and really thin it's obviously not round as before and it is not uh, looking really nice uh, to decrease sharpness I really need to decrease uh, these uh, levels uh, of the shape to create a uh, more rounded shape and the only one way I can uh, create uh, this shape is just uh, leveling out uh, just use levels uh, to decrease the sharpness of the sort of, uh, of the shape that's why I was using a uh, histogram scan you see here it is really like grayish and really softish looking shape uh, but as soon as I add this shape to the uh, foreground as I said uh, the uh, gray outside of the shape of the bark is covering the terrain and removing you see all the details just flattering out it's 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 uh, uh, it's, uh, it's bad <laughs> uh, that's why I uh, took uh, basically uh, the uh, from this note uh, through the histogram scan I created the mask and use it as a mask here and now everything is working so I got the really like soft blend uh, shape of the bark with all the informations of the terrain from previous notes uh, I really recommend you to use uh, this workflow because it is working not only for the it's it's working really nice for everything for example it's really working nice for removing harsh edges when you're blending uh, with max uh, lighten because max lighten is tend to uh, blend everything really with sharp outline and when you will experiment with this node you will definitely see it and to remove uh, this in or decrease this effect just use this method it will help you and it is really helping when you are blending for example grass or flowers uh, to decrease this sharpness uh, on the edges okay so we got the height map of the terrain it's looking like this and the next step is uh, creating the roughness uh, here I want to point out that uh, 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 it's uh, really important uh, to create uh, roughness uh, before uh, Albeda, but uh, it mm, it's it's not uh, really uh, important to uh, add. Uh, it's not really important to add all the details into roughness before uh, you will uh, create the Albeda. Uh, just start uh, with this simple uh, sh uh, shading uh, with simple grays. Uh, considering what you are creating, is it metal? or is it like uh, more like matte surface in my case is more like matte surface uh, maybe stones uh, more like shiny that's why uh, I'm starting uh, with the terrain first and level it uh, to m uh, create light gray uh, level uh, of the grays uh, because obviously the surface of the terrain is really matte it's not reflecting uh, sun uh, really uh, it's not shiny unless it's uh, wet so yeah start from the light grays I'm by the way using uh, roughness uh, uh, metallic uh, PBR uh, workflow uh, it's not glossiness uh, glossiness uh, will be opposite it will be uh, dark uh, gray I uh, basically it is the inver it's in, in inverting the roughness in my case I'm using a roughness metallic workflow that's why it's looking like this um, I, I do a couple of uh, I think uh, blendings here with uh, subtract so I am subtracting like small uh, uh, stone I create from the terrain uh, it's really like subtle but uh, it's um, it's basically adding a little bit of light or, or spec light uh, uh, on the small stones okay the next one is moss I'm not uh, using it here uh, and basically here uh, I'm adding the 
another level <coughs> of all the stones uh, and I will show you that basically this <coughs> uh, uh, texture it's the output of the albedo uh, it's a really quickly uh, rough uh, roughness uh, workflow but for me it is working and as soon as it's working and it's quick I think it's really enough of course you can do all the passes as I did uh, for the stones uh, and create here all the masks for each stone to be uh, precisely uh, roughness but uh, in my case uh, it's working if I create roughness from albedo and it's uh, for me it's uh, it's nice okay guys uh, substance crashed but I am back um, okay let's uh, continue with the roughness so as I said uh, I created uh, basically the roughness pass uh, from the albedo uh, here I used uh, the uh, blend uh, by mask uh, and again I used uh, the stones so uh, basically uh, here I created uh, the mask uh, and removed uh, terrain from these stones uh, and I created this mask and uh, blended uh, basically uh, the inverted albedo uh, which I will show you in a couple of seconds how I created Albeda uh, by mask uh, it just cut out uh, everything uh, except stones and barks and blended with copy uh, on top of my uh, terrain the next pass uh, for the roughness uh, I added uh, this kind of uh, mask uh, for the edges and this uh, uh, texture uh, is uh, get uh, from the curvature mm. and I will explain you really quickly how I created it mm. here I have my height map I create from it the normal map um, it's not uh, RGBA split. It's not. Uh, it's not really necessary. Uh, note here, I can use a uh, simple normal, uh, uh, and uh, I have uh, curvature and curvature smooth nodes. Uh, I experimented and decided to use curvature smooth because it's uh, giving me a more like noticeable result. Uh, okay, um, I use curvature smooth here. Uh, and created two nodes, uh, levels nodes for pits and peaks. Uh, pits, uh, this is the node um, uh, for creating mask uh, for the uh, uh, like pits of the texture. Uh, basically, I need a mask uh, for the dirtness uh, in occluded areas cracks and uh, etc. It's adding really the depth uh, of overall uh, of your material. Uh, basically you are creating of course ambient occlusion but this pass is adding another depth uh, by details and I inverted it so basically I got the black and white mask and peaks. Here I you can see uh, it's like the right part of the uh, histogram and this is the left part of the histogram. Uh, the right part is uh, is um, for the uh, really heights uh, of the uh, curvature smooth. So I'm getting these uh, parts here, uh, and basically it is already looking like a mask. So I'm blending this uh, into the roughness uh, with a subtract, uh, and you see by edges uh, it's uh, uh, darker darker color uh, 
because uh, edges of uh, uh, stones are catching light that's why uh, in roughness it's more like a darker gray you see here um, that's why I added, added uh, like the rim light uh, rim light effect okay and this is uh, I don't know what it is doing <laughs> it's maybe I forgot, I forgot something um, how it's working I just leave it as it is mm, so yeah this is basically the roughness um, let's go to the albedo albedo is divided into two parts uh, the first pass basically here is uh, for creating the color map for uh, terrain uh, this is pass for, for uh, coloring stones and here I'm just blending all together so let's start from the uh, color map for the uh, terrain itself uh, here uh, I'm starting from the from this noise as I said before uh, always try to use uh, generators and noises that are already present in your graph um, so I'm using this one uh, it's coming again from the dirt 3 uh, through the couple of variations uh, of notes uh, here I again used a mosaic gray scale uh, blur it a little bit uh, transform uh, it upscale uh, twice and make a tile footer for the tiling um, so basically I have this kind of noise Uh, and I use mosaic grayscale again as you see with fractal sum for the mosaic map and uh, got some kind of this uh, noisy uh, noisy effect <coughs> the next is again blur uh, high quality grayscale uh, transform 2D I just decreased uh, size I in 2 um, and after I'm using a uh, gradient map uh, only with uh, three, uh, uh, three. Mm, how to say colors? <laughs> Sorry, colors. Uh, uh, you see, it's, it's uh, small variations uh, in levels and in colors uh, between uh, those uh, parts. Um, I see a lot of people are uh, using like photos uh, and uh, with uh, peak gradient uh, method uh, but in my opinion uh, uh, at the beginning stage it is creating really uh, noisy mm, uh, texture really like um, how to say with different uh, levels because when you pick up uh, the uh, colors uh, and uh, levels from the um, um, how to say not levels but intensity information from the uh, photo uh, it's not really correct f while creating albedo because uh, uh, in albedo there is no uh, any information uh, in shadows uh, and it is more like flat colors that's why it is uh, really important to get as close uh, level uh, of the intensity uh, as uh, possible to each other uh, unless it will look uh, really distracting and not um, correct that's why I'm starting with less uh, and after I will add more and more uh, passes uh, with details but really subtle because uh, I don't want to compete the look of terrain uh, with the look of the stones so here I was using like three um, uh, three uh, dots with uh, color um, again mosaic uh, I get this result before and after mosaic uh, uh, with uh, exact the same uh, mosaic uh, <laughs> grayscale noise I got before and uh, I get something like this um, another pass with uh, mosaic 
uh, and mosaic map uh, now is using uh, dirt uh, 3 node uh, with intensity 0 025 uh, the next pass again mosaic but with this uh, fractal sum 2 and it is just adding another level of the variety uh, of the surface now it's more like noisy more like uh, sand looking uh, sand looking uh, uh, texture the next uh, part uh, as you uh, remember before I added uh, some kind of uh, rocks and small stones that are coming out from the terrain uh, and I'm using the same exactly mask here at and add with uh, this uh, uh, light uh, warm gray uh, you see it's really subtle but they are coming out from the uh, terrain uh, the next uh, blend is again uh, the stones that I was using uh, for the uh, yeah, the stones for when I'm using in cracks, uh, these small stones, and in that case I am using like more like uh, bluish uh, gray, uh, cold gray, uh, and put uh, onto the uh, terrain, uh, and it's uh, really uh, nice to use uh, some kind of warm and uh, cold colors in one texture because it's adding another level of the variety in colors and in my opinion it's looking more like uh, more interesting uh, this is the pass for the uh, moss but I'm not using it now uh, so I'll skip it um, this one yeah it's it's from the moss and here uh, I have the stone for uh, pass sorry pass for the first stones so you can see how it's looking um, the stones the color of stones I created here um, again uh, I'm starting from the my texture for the uh, terrain color uh, from different uh, mosaic grid scale and blur each high quality and transformation passes uh, I'm using it with a really like small uh, tile uh, using transform to denote um, uh, so to create some kind of really dense uh, noise uh, afterwards I blend it uh, uh, with uh, this node but uh, without any transformation I think and blend it uh, with subtract uh, so that's why I can uh, have um, the difference uh, between uh, big uh, shapes and real like small noise uh, so I get some of this kind of uh, noisy effect uh, what you can see uh, on the stones when um, um, when uh, when like you can like um, just uh, see on the stone and you can see a lot of like layering small noise uh, on the surface uh, histogram range it a little bit uh, blur uh, it uh, uh, really likes with small value and um, after I do uh, two passes uh, with gradient map again not really a lot of uh, coloring here just uh, simple colors uh, uh, to create like maybe brownish stone and more like uh, grayish stone with uh, uh, dark brown dots it's really it's really looking pleasant I think uh, with a little bit dirtness uh, on the stone and uh, a nice kind of uh, variety I think um, the same method but other like colors here uh, and uh, I'm creating like only two type of colors uh, here is just another like pass uh, uh, with another level of the some kind of uh, curved uh, strains uh, that are mm, uh, like uh, covering uh, that are just showing the structure of the stone and I'm using like uh, basically the same uh, uh, texture uh, I created before for the uh, base uh, for the uh, color 
uh, stones uh, I just transform it histogram scan it and uh, used a directional warp with uh, moisture, moisture noise uh, that's uh, I created this kind of uh, curved uh, texture uh, blurred it uh, again a little bit and blend uh, by this mask uh, this and this color uh, on top of uh, my base uh, uh, color information for the stone and got something like this it's more like some kind of uh, brownish greenish uh, stone and this is uh, with some kind of blue uh, strains uh, um, for the l for for those light grays uh, stones. Uh, here you can see that uh, I was uh, using not so much for the brownish stone, but a lot of uh, white gray, uh, light gray uh, stones. <coughs> so. Basically, what I'm doing, I have this information, color information for stones, and this uh, color, and just blending again. Uh, do passes for stone 01, stone 02, stone 03, stone 04, and etc. And the main thing here that I'm using the masks, as you remember, I created here. You know, those masks, those masks that uh, uh, are giving me to create. Um, masks uh, to create um, uh, like to create <laughs> uh, mask for coloring uh, sorry guys um, I'm just uh <laughs> thinking sometimes really slow uh, uh, in English you know um, yeah, so this um, pass for next stones and again, 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 again. Uh, and after I basically got this kind of albedo texture. And here, as I said before, you can see that there is no really a big difference in values. Uh, and sorry, uh, it's my mistake. Uh, before I was talking uh, word uh, levels and but I meant the word uh, uh, values uh, in terms of uh, coloring uh, that's uh, why, uh, why I, I'm not really recommending to put uh, color uh, to pick up colors from the photos unless it's uh, really like photo with uh, not uh, really dark and uh, not really highlight uh, values in it um, so yeah because here you can clearly uh, see the difference between uh, stones and terrain. Okay, the next pass is for the pits, and again I'm using the mask that I created before from Curvature. Uh, it's a little bit dirtness, not too much, because all the information is coming from ambient occlusion, the depth of the terrain, but it's really nice to add some darkness uh, into Albeda. It's uh, really adding uh, more depth into all your texture and uh, I, I know that a lot of people are saying that it's not really important to include ambient occlusion into your it's uh, it's not re not really needed uh, correctly to say but if you add some kind of occlusion uh, with dirtness into the albedo uh, in my experience it's uh, better uh, it's uh, adding more depth and more believable, more like uh, pleasant result in my opinion, uh, because uh, other way it will be really like uh, really like flat, I think flat texture. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is like pits uh, pass, uh, and after I'm using uh, sharpness. Uh, again uh, with little uh, intensity it's just uh, reinforcing all the small uh, small uh, details uh, in your texture it's really good to have at the end this pass and yeah basically this is ambient occlusion that I'm getting with the new ambient occlusion node uh, with those settings uh, I'm using like GPU optimization uh, it's really really nice looking ambient occlusion uh, I, I, actually you can 
get this kind of occlusion maybe baking from the Z brush when you sculpted all the stones and all the terrain but just look how it's beautifully looking ambient occlusion in substance designer I'm really loving it mm. and the the end thing that you must have a uh, base material node it's really cool node because it's uh, have uh, it has uh, all the inputs for all your maps and uh, when you are working with height map you don't need to create actually a normal map uh, it is creating for you just from your height map uh, you can see that here is no normal settings in uh, base material node uh, with like intensity you want and it is just uh, giving you the normal map uh, uh, from the height map of course uh, Albeda, final Albeda, final roughness, metallic. I'm not using anything here as metallic, so it's black. Ambient occlusion, e height map for the maybe for the Unreal or for the Marmon set. So that's it. And um, the main thing that you can use uh, this node uh, and uh, publish uh, the material and use it as, as a base material, basic material in uh, Substance Painter and texture anything if you need like this kind of uh, desert rocky terrain inside painter and that's why it's really like nice to have not only these outputs but the base material node so that's it basically uh, I was not like showed you the uh, cracks uh, node it's uh, looking like this cracks uh, pass uh, because I was not really using those cracks inside uh, this uh, uh, material because I'm not really liked how it is looking uh, at the end but mm, the mm, uh, overall uh, sometimes I'm just leaving uh, these notes uh, for the uh, next uh, maybe materials because I really liked how it's uh, how it was like turned out here with these shapes so yeah if if you want uh, the detail look uh, for this uh, breakdown of this graph, just uh, put it into the comments uh, because I think it's 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 already t too much information. Mm. So that's it. Um, uh, I'm really like appreciate uh, appreciate your time and uh, I think. Uh, um, I hope, sorry, I hope that uh, the information uh, and my experience that I showed here uh, will be helpful for you guys. Um, and uh, uh, if you like uh, what you saw, uh, please uh, uh, subscribe, like, uh, and comment uh, all your questions. Uh, I really glad. Uh, I will be really glad to answer. Uh, those uh, and it will push me to uh, create more tutorials and uh, I will definitely create more one uh, with Substance Designer and uh, Substance Painter I think um, I have like a couple of ideas in my uh, head uh, so yeah uh, and now I will show you the final result in Marmoset uh, toolback just bear with me loading this scene uh, Marmoset is really a uh, nice tool uh, sorry I just need to decrease the resolution otherwise my PC will blow out now <laughs> So yeah, this is uh, how it is uh, looking uh, in the Marmoset uh, with the uh, height map applied. Uh, so you see all the details, all the depth uh, information, all the surface variety. So hope you like uh, the material and uh, yeah, really uh, try to experiment as much as you uh, want uh, with Substance uh, Designer. It's uh, a really uh, cool program uh, for create any kind of materials. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot guys. Uh, 
and uh, see you in my next uh, tutorial. Um, have a nice day. Bye-bye.